Hello, this is Doug. Can you predict the next stock price for Apple or Amazon? If you could, I'd ask you to give me the next lottery numbers. Although it's nearly impossible to predict the future or stock price, you can at least try to estimate it or forecast it using the relationships with other variables. One thing you got for you is historical data. And just like weather forecasting, you can try this with stock forecasting. You just need to find some variable that correlates to the stock price. And this is the key part of regression. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do some basic forecasting using simple linear regression in Excel. Want to make money in the stock market? Whether your goal is to save up for a house, college, or a car, some of us think that investing in the market might help us. Can we use simple linear regression to help us predict an individual stock price? No, maybe not. How about predicting the stock market index? Well, maybe. We'll use the S&P 500 as an example. Here I've got some historical information about the S&P 500. The January 1st date for these corresponding years, 2012 to 2019. And later on, I'll show 2020 and 2021 for some predictions. Now, let's chart this out. I'm going to select this area, go under Insert, Scatter, and let's insert a scatter chart. And this is our scatter chart to help us define uh, the trend line that we're going to use and get our regression formula. One of the things that you should always think about doing is looking at the chart and the direction of the lines that are scattered. What we're looking for is the correlation of our year, here are our X parameter, and our stock or the index price, our Y parameter, the SP500 index price. So we want to see is it going up? Do we see a trend of it going up? Or is it going down? Or is it really going nowhere? So that's kind of the correlation of the X variable versus the Y variable. So you're looking for something, whether it goes up, go down, or maybe there's no trend. Now for this S&P 500 index data, I'm going to put a trend line, right? Click that, select one of these points and add a trend line. So I've got my trend line here now, and it's got a nice upward slope. And within this trend line, I can also add the equation. So the equation is our basic regression equation. So if we look at the Wikipedia article, we're going to, we're going to see how the simple linear regression gets defined. But there looks like this complex equation here. Well, basically, in Excel, you can have it display that equation, and it looks like that. Let's bring it over here. And the equation is basically giving you your slope, 201.71, which is our slope, which is that slope, that line, that incline, and it's going to give you the y-intercept. So let's say, if I, for example, x was 0. It would give you the, the y-intercept. If x was 0, where would y show up? y would show up. If x was 0, y would show up down there, somewhere down there below. And that's basically because we're using this year parameter, these thousands, right, 2012, 2019, these year parameters for that. Incidentally, you can also get these numbers from formulas. So there actually is a formula called slope. I'll type in slope. We now have our known y's. That's this. And these are our years. Press enter. And you'll see that that number is the same over here. Then same with the intercept. Type equals intercept. Press tab. My known y's, comma, and then my known x's. And it's going to give me the same number you see here in this equation, right? Now, what is R2? R2 is our R squared. It's going to be a value between 0 and 1. And it's the percentage of the variation of the dependent variable, y, in this case, the index price, is how much of it is explained by the variation of the independent variable, the x, the year. right? And so we can do that. We can go R, S, Q, and our known y's are here, and our known x's are here. Press Enter. And it'll give you 0 0.91 with a bunch of other numbers. And that's actually pretty high. And if I wanted to put that into the chart, I can actually put that in the chart. Go back into my line here. Let's go back to my line here and display our squared value there. There's that checkbox. And we'll see that that number is the same. So that's telling us that the variation, the variation in the next price is pretty much well explained by the variation in our years as the year progresses. So how do we use this now in prediction, right? How do we use the forecast? Let's say, for example, I want to forecast for January 1st, 2020. All I need to do is plug in 2020. Actually, I probably don't need the, the 1-1 2020. I just need 2020 and 2021. Press Enter. And those, let's change that to general, right? All I need to do is plug in 2020 to this equation where that X is, and I'll get my value for Y. 
the index, the stock uh, SP500 index. So I'll do equals 201.71 times 2020, click that, and then minus 404512, press enter. It's going to come up with a predicted value of 2942. And let's do the same for 2021. I'll just pull it down here. And it'll calculate that formula for 2021, that H19 right here. That's 2021. Press enter. So that's my predicted value of the stock market, the S&P 500 index for January 1st, 2020 and January 1st, 2021. So in essence, there is your simple linear regression. That's how you can use your regression formula to kind of predict your values, your future values. Now, we can end it here, but let's see how this could help us with understanding the return that we got. So if you're looking at a return of the stock market, let's say you invested a dollar here in the S&P 500, uh, you want to kind of see what your yearly return is. And you can use the CAGR, which stands for the Compounded Annual Growth Rate. Or basically, in Excel, there's a function that is similar to that, and it's called the RRI, the Equivalent Interest Rate Over Time. And what we need to do is type in RRI, press tab, what are our number of periods? The first year starts at zero, and we're at our eighth period here, so I'm going to type in eight, right, for 2020. And present value, what was the present value? Well, the present value at the beginning was that value. And what is our future value? Comma. The future value is here. Press enter. And it looks like the compounded annual growth rate at, the, at 2020 was 11%. And that's not bad considering the investments in savings or checkings and money market funds you get these days, right? So if we look at 2021, let's type equals RRI, number of periods, that's nine, comma, present value is here, comma, future value is this amount, this predicted amount, and that gives us 10%. A little lower, but still not bad, 10%. Now let's look at the actual value of 2020 and 2021. So I just happen to have it here. So we have these are our values of 2020 and 2021 for the S&P 500. Control C to copy, bring it back here. Control V to paste, and those are our values there. Let's increase it to the tenths place. Let's also find out the RRI of it equals RRI tab. The number of periods. I'll just use this one for my period. Present value, that value, future value, this value here. Press return. 12%, not bad, equals RRI. What's my period there? Present value, that value, comma, future value, this value here, press enter, and then we've got 13%. So that did even better than our prediction. So our prediction was 11%. The actual was an annual growth rate of 12%. We had a predicted annual growth rate of 10%. We really got 13%. So when you think about it, the prediction was conservative, and we invested in the SP 500 index which is one of the recommendations that Warren Buffett suggests. And if you didn't know too much about stocks, you just wanted to put money in the market to put away for a rainy day or house payment, this is actually a strategy that he recommended rather than buying individual stocks. And even this strategy beat out active money managers. So when you think about it, this, one, this video was a twofer. It gives you a basic understanding of a simple linear regression and how it could be applied to the stock market and a suggestion on investing in an index is probably not a bad way to go. So there you go. That's some basic forecasting using simple linear regression. This may or may not make you a little bit richer, but the concepts you learned here will help you make a better informed decision than just pulling out data from thin air. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.